guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nathan East. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Wednesday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. And I do that through Bible studies, book reviews, discussions, and more. So today's video is another reading vlog. I'm literally recording this reading vlog after the last reading vlog. Um, but you guys are gonna see these on like different days, probably different weeks. Um, but they're literally like the next day that I'm recording this. And I'll be diving into Jerusalem Rising today by Barbara M. Britton. And um it's book three in the Tribes of Israel series. I already read the first book, which is Providence Hannah's Journey. Click the article to that video. Five star read, phenomenal. So I'm excited to dive into this. But I just got back in the house. It is currently what time is it? Um 3.33, had to look at the clock, 3.33, um, my mom and I just ran out real quick because I needed to go get some new headphones, so I did get some new headphones for myself, um, Bluetooth headphones from 5 and below, um, just got two pairs, I like to keep them on hand, um, just because they do last about maybe two, three months for me, depending, um, so I just bought some backup ones because my current ones, they're actually done charging. My current ones, um, the right ear no longer works, the left one is fine. But once these completely conk out, I want to make sure that I have backups. Um, and then while I was there, I saw that they had essential oils and I love essential oils. Essential oils is amazing. I'm a candle and essential oils type of person and I haven't really been using my diffuser. I have oils in that pink bin right here. I have a bunch of oils, um, but I saw that they had some and I was like, why not? So I got a few. I got this set for $5. It's from Alchemy Living and it's aromatherapy uplifting set, five pieces. Um, so it has, this is tea tree, no, peppermint, lemon, tea rose, eucalyptus, and lavender. So yeah, my mom and I both got one. So we got that and this set you can use obviously in your diffusers or you can put it in your bath water you can put it on a wet or hot a wet compress or you can blend it into your lotions and body oils which i think is awesome so we got that um i also got a new um pop socket thing for my phone this was the one that i was using but it's kind of like messing up as you can see so i got a new one and it's this right here it's pink and it matches it goes with my case and it's smaller than this one though i did like this one um it was real simple and easy it snapped open um i just i like this one because it's actually a stand as well so i got that i can fill this out um and then i got some more of the essential oils as well i have let me see I'm trying to see so i have two of the regular essential oils which is like one cent so i got a sandalwood one and then I got a white sage. And then I got four of their like combo blends. So this one is Serenity, which is patchouli and cedarwood. This one is Sleep, which is lavender and bergamot. I love anything with lavender. I have Happiness, which is jasmine and sandalwood. And then I have Energy, which is grapefruit and rosemary. My mom got the same one as well, so we bought two of these. I'm actually going to um, smell these off camera. Then I got some sticky notes, because why not? So I have this hexagon sticky note. It was only a dollar. They're so pretty. And then I got these two sets, both for a dollar. Um, I love the little cardboard thing it's on. It's so thick. I could use it when I'm done. But um, yeah, it comes with like regular sticky notes and then the little page flags on it as well. So I have that one. And then I have like the marbled one. This one kind of goes with this one in a sense. So... That's pretty, oh, and then I got Tic Tacs, because so I, I love Tic Tacs. Um, so I have three of the orange ones and three of, like, the berry ones. One goes to my son of each, so I'm keeping two for myself. That's what I love. Um, and then, hold on. I bought some stuff from Walmart. I got my son some stuff from Walmart because he's always asking for a mug. And we have mugs in the house, but um, I wanted to get him his own, so I did. I was going to get him a Scooby-Doo one, but then I saw this one. It was the same price as a Scooby-Doo one, so I just got this one. And it is a color-changing mug, so basically, depending on the hot drink you have. Um, so before it looks like this, and then after it looks like that. He does like Batman, and um, he likes to drink a lot of hot chocolates, whether it's um, the homemade hot chocolate where I actually like buy white chocolate chips and milk and we make our own homemade white chocolate um, hot chocolates or if it's regular, like hot chocolate. So I got that, and then I got him some pajamas because they were on sale for like five bucks which is never really you know i never really find them on sale they normally like twelve dollars ten dollars sold them on five sold them on sale for five so i got five of them i got a spider-man one this star wars one i don't watch star wars but got it uh, a batman one to match 
and Avengers. He loved Avengers. And then I saw the Sonic one, which is what sold me because he loves Sonic. Um, so I got him that. And that is pretty much it. So what I'm going to do now is finish up with uh, my Bible study. I'm playing catch up with the Tessa Abstract Bible study. So I want to catch up on that. Um, possibly have a meeting today as well. I'm not sure. We're going to see if we're going to meet today or tomorrow. Um, and then I'm going to dive into reading Jerusalem Rising. And when I come back, I will discuss like the back synopsis and everything. But I just wanted to get this video started. So yeah, I'm sipping on some um, pumpkin spice tea. So good. And my little white kitty cat mug. So cute. Wait, I'm gonna clean up, smell these um, essential oils, put them in my bin over there, and then get back into my Bible study and come back when I get ready to read. Okay, guys, so it's a little later, but I'm finally getting ready to dive into Jerusalem Rising. The audiobook, again, is about five hours, so it shouldn't take me more than two and a half hours to read it through. And I'm super excited because this book actually involves Nehemiah. I have already read Providence, uh, Hannah's Journey, excuse me, which is book one in the Tribes of Israel series. And I know there's a second book that involves Naomi. This one is book three, which is all about Ada and Nehemiah. So I'm going to read the blurb on the front and then the synopsis on the back for you guys. So on the front, it says, when Ada volunteers to rebuild Jerusalem's wall, she soon discovers not all Judah's enemies lie outside the crumbling rocks. And then on the back, it says, when enemies close in, Ada must find the strength to heed God's call. When Ada Bat Shalom finds the governor of Judea, or Judah, excuse me, weeping over the crumbling wall of Jerusalem, she learns the reason for Nehemiah's unexpected visit. God has called him to rebuild the wall around the city of David. Nehemiah challenges the people of God to labor on the wall, and in return, the names of their fathers will be written in the annals for future generations to cherish. But Ada has one sister and no brothers. Will her father, who rules a half district of Jerusalem, be forgotten forever? Ada bravely vows to rebuild her city's wall, though she soon discovers that Jerusalem not only has enemies outside the city, but also within. Can Ada, her sister, and the men they love honor God's call, or will their mission be crushed by the same stones they hope to construct? So, I'm excited. I have read a book before about Nehemiah that included um, the governor. Is it the governor? He was like the ruler of part of Jerusalem and his two daughters helping to rebuild the wall and it was a whole bunch of drama with Nehemiah not liking that so I'm excited to see how this book plays out um and yeah so I do have the bookmark that matches here it is the front and the back so I'm going to use this and um yeah just like I did before I'm going you're going to see me read the first two chapters and then I am going to come with my initial thoughts and then I'm going to read from chapter three to chapter let me see 10 um come back with my thoughts and then we'll do it that way so it should take me about two and a half hours i do have the audiobook still the same person that narrated the last book her name is mindy newell i think that's how i say it um so i'm pretty sure i'll like it um yeah we're just gonna get into it so the first thing i definitely notice is that there are scriptures on the top of the chapters i'm not sure if this is like for every chapter or not let me see no not for every chapter but this one does include a scripture on top so that's going to be interesting um so yeah i'm gonna dive in and give my initial thoughts after chapter two i also have my dinner here i started eating on it but it's mashed mashed potatoes corn with some hot wings so that's what i'm eating so i'm sorry that you guys are gonna see me eat but yeah let's commence the um montage of me reading and my initial thoughts So I read 22 pages of the first two chapters and I'm not sure how I feel about it so far. Um, it's definitely interesting. You can definitely see um, that Ada has this very strong um, characteristic about her. She's a very strong woman. She's headstrong. She's, she seems to be stubborn as well. 
um, we are introduced to her sister Judith. Um, we're also introduced to her father in Nehemiah. Nehemiah seems like it's going to be real cool because I love Nehemiah. So I'm already here for Nehemiah before you even get to meet more of his character. But um, the writing is easy, um, just as it was with Providence. But I feel like it's going to take me at least five chapters to really get into the flow of things um with the first book with providence it was real quick to just like oh my god i love them love them love them love like i loved hannah and gail from the very beginning i, th I feel like i'm definitely going to like ada but there are probably going to be some things that make me not like her too much if that makes sense um so i'm interested to see where it goes with her and nehemiah we love him so now i'm just going to read um chapter three to chapter ten and then i'll come back with my thoughts on those chapters okay guys so i got to chapter six um well i'm at chapter seven now and it's pretty good so far um i love ada she's very much a strong sassy girl loving her um her father is so sweet i love that in this book nehemiah approves of her building because it was another book like I said that I read where Nehemiah was against it and I did enjoy that book but I kind of like that this takes a different outlook on Nehemiah in regards to women rebuilding the wall so I'm loving that um there is a character named Gershom that I just <laughs> I don't like him for reasons we're not gonna talk about it but I don't like him and um there's another character named Othniel I think that's how you say his name Othniel he's so sweet he's not my he's not like my little cinnamon roll from the first book but he i'm trying to figure out what he gonna be but he's like a little sweet pie you know sweet a sweetie pie for me he's like a sweetie pie right now i don't know what i'm gonna call him because he can't be my cinnamon roll because only gilead from providence can be my, my cinnamon roll but he's sweet i like him so far but i have an assignment to do for my bishop so i'm actually going to listen to the audiobook um for the next two chapters three chapters seven eight nine ten yeah for the next three chapters i'm gonna listen to the audiobook and i'll put my book to the side um and do this assignment it's not a long assignment but it's just a real quick assignment that he needs me to do for him um so yeah i'm gonna go to my computer right now and do that so i'll come back to you guys after i'm done reading up to chapter 10 with my actual thoughts on what i read okay guys so i'm really quickly going to give you my thoughts um that i read up until chapter 10 just because i don't know how long this is going to take me to do this assignment <laughs> for my bishop um i am redoing something for him um outside of being a you know a bishop and a pastor he is a musician as well um and he's worked with like famous people kenny Lattimore, Aaliyah, vanessa williams and things like that um so i'm working on some work for him but um yeah it's gonna take me not long but i definitely want to just get my thoughts out there while they're still fresh in my mind before i forget but um so i already said that i love ada i'm loving her sassiness she's so sassy and headstrong and stubborn i love nehemiah and how he um allows her to do the work i love othniel Oth othniel othniel whatever the boy's name is he's a sweetie pie um there's this guy named talum he is definitely a mysterious person especially since he said some stuff to uh at um at a sister judith that makes me start to question some things so i don't know if my my thoughts and assumptions are wrong or right but with what he said i'm kind of questioning some things now okay um gershom just he gotta go we get to meet uh sand ballot i think that's his name sand ballot i'll put the scripture exactly on the screen exactly where in scripture he is the sand ballot is one of the people that tried to oppose nehemiah rebuilding the wall as well as tobiah so i we, we got to those two part those two characters which i definitely know about them from the bible um yeah that's pretty much it that has happened so far like i said there's just that one situation with talum that i'm like okay he said something that was really like way off and strange to me so we'll see um so far i'm enjoying it I definitely still prefer Providence over this so far, um, being 87 pages in. But next, I need to read chapters 11 to chapter 23. So what I'm going to do is come back when I get to chapter 22 and read 22 and 23 on camera. So I'm going to get a little, little piece of paper here so I can mark that so I can remember. But uh, yeah, so far, I'm definitely enjoying it. Um, it's looking to be a four star, 
but we'll see how the next third goes in the story but i'm gonna finish up this assignment real quick for my bishop send this over to him and then get back into reading um well, i'm actually gonna listen to the audiobook while i'm working um and then i'll listen all the way up until chapter 21 and then when i get to chapter 21 i'll wait a minute and then get on camera when i'm done to do chapters 22 and 23 but so far so good again so far providence is my number one road dog because we love hannah we love gilead the, the, the cinnamon rolls we love it but um ada i love the sassiness and i definitely could see this being ada definitely 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 could see the sassiness from this character on the cover um i mean let's not forget to mention the covers are gorgeous i know barbara did mention that she did not come up with the concept the publishers did so the publishers they did a bomb job with this like they did a great job with the covers um and just the colors in general so yeah i'm going to continue listening while i work and then come back when i get ready to read yeah <laughs> Okay, guys, so I read to page 167, and um, I will say that I think I should have waited some time in between reading this and Providence, just because I'm still thinking and reeling over Providence so much that I'm not giving this a full fair chance, but I'm still loving the characters. I love Ada's father, Shalom. I love him so much. He is such... An amazing father i love nehemiah the fact that they both support her working where in this time in the era of the bible women were not seen equally as men even now in society they're not seen equally but even so back then they couldn't really work they couldn't um you know approach priests they couldn't speak to men out of whack um you know there was a scene with her father that kind of made me mad like i was like why you do that to her why did you do it but when he came back and, you know, he spoke to her, I was like, oh, I love the relationship she has with her, her parents. It's amazing. Um, the stuff going on with uh, Othniel, whew, just why. I hope they save my poor baby. Um, and then Talum is, I'm so confused about him because we it, it is revealed exactly who he is, but not who he is. Like, we know who he's the son of, but they don't specifically say who, like, the name of the person so I'm just I'm interested in learning more about him because he's intriguing me there's like this mysterious thing about him that like pulls me in um Gershom and his brothers I'm over them they they can go kick rocks okay they can kick rocks but there is a quote that I do want to um share with you guys that uh Ada said so basically uh she had approached Nehemiah concerning the a sort sense of slavery that is happening within the walls of Jerusalem and um she approached him she got in trouble because obviously a woman is not supposed to speak to a man especially in the station that, that Nehemiah is in as governor um but they had that that talk there's some stuff that took down went down she goes home her father comes a couple days after um and you know she's like she had to speak up because the guilt was nagging at her and her father's like what guilt and she said how many times did I see Beulah in the streets forlorn over her daughter's absence? I offered prayer, but nothing else. I knew the landowners were struggling. I heard their outcries on the road from the city and remained silent. I did nothing to help the people who needed it most until Othniel was allotted the same fate. And um, I, I had to mark that as a quote because a lot of the times we hear about people in trouble. We, 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 we see things. Um, that people are going through and we simply offer prayer and there's nothing wrong with prayer but sometimes behind your prayer there needs to be action love is an action word so if you love someone if you see someone going through something you're supposed to do something um now if all you can offer is prayer then that's understandable but majority of the times we definitely can do more than just offer prayer we can speak to the law we can you know go find a church or something for them to speak to we see someone homeless we can speak to a homeless shelter like there's things that we can do but we don't do it because we don't feel it's our duty outside of just praying as a Christian. And for me, even that, for me personally, that slapped me in the face because I'm like, how many times have people, you know, mentioned something? And I'm like, oh, I'll pray for you. And sometimes I actually really will sit down and pray for them. 
but sometimes there's more that I can do than just pray. I can search for resources for them. I can give money if I have the finances. I can provide, you know, food if I have the, the ways and the means to do so. And it's just like, we don't really help until we see someone or know someone that we personally know. Does that make sense? We don't really truly help until there's someone we personally know going through the same situation. And then we want to take action. I'm just like, ugh, at a my heart so um i'm definitely definitely enjoying it it's looking like a four star just because i feel like because i read these literally back to back um i read providence yesterday which was friday and today is saturday that i'm reading this that i'm still stuck on providence so what i was gonna do is read lioness tomorrow on sunday but i think i'm gonna wait till next weekend no i can't do it next weekend i have to read it tomorrow darn it because i'm not gonna be home next weekend next weekend is my son's father's birthday so yeah um I just I feel like if I had more time I mean I had the time but I definitely still wanted to get this content out to you guys so I'm definitely going to revisit this book down the line um because I feel like this definitely could be a five-star read but because I'm so stuck on <laughs> Providence and Hannah and Gil um I'm not giving this 100% a fair chance um Nehemiah is in it is not it's not as prominent but it would make sense because it's following Ada and not Nehemiah um but I'm definitely enjoying it. So I only have the last couple pages to read. So I'm going to read up to chapter 36, 35, 36. Which other was that? I'm going to read to 34. I mean, 33. So 24 to 33. Um, and then I'll come back on camera. And you guys can watch me finish out reading this and give you guys my final thoughts. But I am enjoying it so far. So I'm going to get back to reading and listening to this um, book. <laughs> Okay, guys, so I finished. I, I don't know what to get this. I'm going to have to sit on my rating for... You know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to use the call pile system. If you guys don't know what the call pile system is, click this. Click the eye to go to the, this video from this um, booktuber. I use this system when I am reading like my regular books and don't know what to rate it. But I really don't know what to give this because I... I want to say a five, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's five, maybe 4.5, 4, 4, I, I don't know. So I'm going to actually use this system right now. And Call Pal, I talked about it previously in another video, is basically a seven tier rating system in which you rate the characters, the atmosphere, the writing, um, the plot, the entry, the logic, and the excitement that you had, or no, enjoyment that you had. So... I'm going to have to do that and figure out exactly what to give this. Because I don't want to say five just because. I definitely need to need to know why I'm giving it a rating. And sometimes I do have trouble rating books. Um, but before that, I did something real stupid. Like, real stupid. So, this nail broke. Um, for some reason, both of these nails have been breaking. Like, chipping off, breaking. And I've just been gluing them back. Because I'm actually going to take these off probably in a couple days. And just wear my natural nails. Let them air out for a while until Christmas time. But, um... Yeah, I put the nail glue, right? Put the nail glue on it, right? And then I had... <laughs> so stupid. I had chicken under my nail. So I went to go and take it off with my tongue. And unfortunately, the glue wasn't dry yet. So I got glue on my tongue. I got most of it off. But it's, I can still feel it on, like, the tip of my tongue. So I have to figure that I'll probably brush, like, really hard to get it off. But I digress. So I'm going to put this into the system right now um and i'm gonna stick to this system when 2021 hits because i haven't used it the entire year i use it once in march i think i use it a few times in march once in february once in april a few times in july sometimes some in august september october this is like the second book for november that i'm using this for because i really don't know what to rate it so this is jerusalem rising Bye. Bob. 
April in Britain. Paperback. This is biblical fiction. This is adult. I own it. It's a whole system in which you can like catalog all the books that you own when you read them um, and things like that. I like to do that because I'm trying to diver diversify my reading, especially for my secular books. Okay, so for characters, I like them. It wasn't okay. So each section is rated by like a 10, a 1 to 10, and then you divide the number by 7 to get the actual like star rating system. So. 1 to a 10 characters, I'm going to say an 8, an 8, atmosphere, I'm going to say a 7 because it's, it's, I wish that there was a little bit more detail as far as like the location and everything, there wasn't much to that, so that's why I'm saying a 7, I didn't feel like I was there, like with Providence, I felt like I was there with her, with Hannah, dealing with everything, with this, there wasn't a lot as far as, like, description of the, uh, of Jerusalem and rebuilds in the walls. Um, there were a few things there in there, so that's what I'm saying, seven. Writing, I definitely enjoyed it. It was a nine. Um, I don't really ever give a book a full, well, no. You know what? Yeah, writing is a nine. I'm gonna say nine. Um, okay. Plot. I'm gonna say an eight for the plot. Just because there were times where I just didn't fully get it especially it could have been because i was confusing this with the other book that i read as well so that's what i'm saying eight like i said i'm going to end up rereading this book down the line to give it a fair 100 percent chance um so that's an eight um so then we have logic so i mean my intrigue my intrigue was pretty good it was an eight definitely an eight so right now we're at a three star rating okay um logic i'm gonna say an eight just because the whole situation with talum i still don't get <laughs> Like, I don't get the situation with Tyler. My enjoyment was about an 8. So, that came out to an 8 um, as far as, like, a rating. And then that would be a 4. So, an 8 is definitely, like, a 4.5. So, it's a 4.5 star rating for me. Okay. Okay. I can deal with that. I can I can deal with it being a 4.5 star rating. So, that is my final answer. I'm just updating my goodly. So, 4.5 star rating for this. I definitely love Providence. Definitely was a read Providence. It was bomb. But, again, my problem is that I read these literally back to back. So, that is the issue. Um, so, I am definitely can see me rereading this down the line. Um, so just revisiting it to fully getting the enjoyment. But, for the first read, a 4.5 star rating. I love me some Ada. Ada is sassy. She's both. She's a little stubborn there's some things she did i was just like girl why just be quiet just stop talking just just relax but i under also understood why she did it because no one else was sticking up and i know when i did the um bible study on david and goliath that question i asked was would you stand up for god when no one else would and that's pretty much what ada did she stood up for god when all the other did not want to do that um i loved nehemiah nehemiah was awesome i wanted more of him but again being that this did not specifically follow nehemiah it's understandable but i did enjoy it uh the ending was perfect the romance for me kind of threw me off just slightly um and i said this before with the first book that i understand that back in the time back in the day in, in the bible era they like got together really quickly fell in love Ooh, i'm in love first like like at love at first sight compared to how we are nowadays so that i understand but i just the connection with her and othniel i just i didn't understand then the connection with Talim and Judith, I definitely didn't understand. And I, I don't, yeah, especially because Talim is supposed to be old. So, <laughs> like, I know that was okay back then, but even now, I don't, yeah, we just gonna leave it at that. But, um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed reading it. And I definitely will have a review for this, like an actual sit down review for this book. But I enjoyed it. I would recommend you guys check this book out as well as the entire the, the entire series. Um, I just need to get my hands on book two, which I think I have an ebook copy on my Nook. But the problem is my Nook, the charger is completely broken, sadly. And I have an old generation Nook. Like I got my Nook back in 2013. They don't make the wires for it anymore, which kind of sucks. So I have to figure out something. But yeah, I'm gonna rate this and I'm gonna go. So tomorrow, which is Sunday, I might also be reading the other book, which is Lioness, um, Mahler's Journey, which is the first book in the daughters of Zelophehad. I finally said it right, Zelophehad. I've always been saying Zelophehad, but 
I forgot the O, so it was the Loaf Ahead, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's the first book in the Daughters of the Loaf Ahead series, and um, there are three books currently out, so this is the first book, so I'm definitely going to be reading this tomorrow, of course, most likely because I'm enjoying Hannah's, Hannah, why am I saying Hannah? I'm enjoying Barbara's writing, so I'm tired, just a little tired. Um, it's 1041, I definitely could have finished this a little earlier, but I had work to do, I got that done, and then I was talking to my son and his father, we was powwowing for like a good hour and a half on the phone, so yeah, uh, but yeah, I, I loved it, and I definitely would recommend you guys check it out, so links are down below if you guys are interested in an audiobook and buying a paper co paperback copy or an ebook copy, all links are down below, and um, that is it for this video, so thank you guys for watching, reading, commenting, subscribing, and all that great stuff, and I will see you guys in the next reading vlog, which for me is tomorrow, but for y'all, it's a couple days. Like, like a week or so. So, bye.